do things a little bit differently because I want to work on my little display of our daily rhythm and I'm gonna take you along our daily routine and our blocks with older children along the way as I make a new sign for myself and the kids too. They count. Foggy mornings are where I begin Conversations I can never win But it's not a competition Though if it was, I'm losing Welcome back, friends. If you're brand new to my channel, my name is Arlene with Arlene & Company. Thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate your presence. And this is episode three, harmonizing our daily blocks and rhythms with older children. Now, there is a lot of different elements that affects our days. And um, I want to kind of show you a little snapshot. Very okay, routine, rhythm, what is this? <laughs> um, it's, you know, it's a commonly used term um, in Waldorf inspired um, education routine is kind of a step down to me from schedule. Uh, routine is kind of more rigid and rhythm kind of just like, you know, we're ocean beach people. Let's just go with the, go with the flow. Yeah, we're just born in the wrong era. Anyways, so to me there is, you know, there's a difference between a routine um, and a rhythm. There is a difference obviously between a routine and a schedule. So there is not gonna be at 8 a.m. We do this at 8.30, we do that. So if you're looking for that type of video, this is not it. <laughs> Okay, but I do hope that um, this answers your questions because I get this question a lot. Okay, how you structure your day. A quiet spot before anyone else is awake or ready to ask me, can you help me with this? Or do you need that? Or anything else? This is really where I start my day and I need to be in darkness, okay? I like, I like my dark. So what are we doing today? Um, in my schoolness planner, I have our daily rhythm, but it's pretty much just very cut and dry. It just kind of like went down the list. I don't know what I was thinking when I was writing it down. I think I was um, like spending so much time embellishing the planner because it's like my record keeper, uh, which I keep for here for the state of Florida and stuff. And I have the accurate records and representation of what we've done in the year. We've done that. I've always had some pretty display of some sort, even if I couldn't put it on a wall or anything. So as you guys know, I am a flexible Waldorf and include traditional stuff. I can include Charlotte Mason things and stuff um, into our routine since like the very beginning. Um, however, I'm always gonna spin it into a more Waldorfy vibe. That's just what speaks to us. Uh, my kiddos actually were in a private school before I pulled them from the traditional setting. They were in a private school that was, um, the director was actually a Waldorf trained teacher. So a lot of those influences were there as well as Montessori and project-based learning. Um, they literally were always outside as well. Um, so this Waldorf concept was not new to me when we entered the homeschool arena. And we tried to go like the little bit of more of the classical route, um, and that didn't hold us for very long. It kind long. of went slowly back to where we were comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, from last year, I was trying to get away from these more teacher intensive type of days and um, give myself more breathing room, you know, for work and such. Um, however, I just, it did not sit right with us. It wasn't something that was true to our nature. So we went away from that and then I'm like, okay, so how can we stay true and authentic to our harmony of our wow. days? The flexibility that I need to step away when needs so and then foster that level of independence as well. So, and that's why we, so I'm going doing. to explain a lot of different concepts to you of how we translate it. Uh, don't take me for the authority in all things Waldorf because I'm so not. And um, and if you really from want about Waldorf Inspire homeschooling, I highly suggest Hannah from Pepper and Pine. She was her and um, her and Tanya from Project Happy Home were my first people that I stalked here on YouTube a thousand years ago. <laughs> now, Tanya is not um, Waldorfy, but she does incorporate pieces here and there. But I love those, like, they were two different type of styles, and they just Let's both go me. down the list now. So, with um, our flavor of Waldorf Inspire, there is a couple of elements that we want to stay true to, and that is flowing our days with head, heart, and hands. And that, um, I know I've been asked a lot about, like, okay, what does that mean? I'm gonna oversimplify it for you because we can have a video just on that, right? So we are going to um, engage the intellect, 
the mind, um, so with head, heart, the emotional connection. That can mean so many different things to different people um, and different families. And hands, the physical engagement um, with the art activity day or whatever may speak to you, uh, which a lot of times for us, that's the lively arts. And I'll explain the lively arts, you know, that term um, it may be foreign to some people. So that is also how I craft our main lesson blocks, how I craft our days with keeping those things in mind. However, there's another component that speaks to me. Now I say these things and no, I don't agree with everything Waldorfy at all. I mean, <laughs> There's some history there that you wanna, mm, yeah. Anyway, so that's why we're flexible. We take what we like and leave the rest. Um, but there are some parts that really connect with us and make sense to us and works for my kiddos and has for years. Um, so then the other element of rooting our days in the flow of our day, in the rhythm of it, um, is the breathe in and breathe out element. Um, and yes, I'm a yogi. <laughs> Not so much these days because my back is basically broken with a giant lesion on it. If you've missed all that practice, meditation and stuff, I had my kiddos, if you've been following me for years, that they've done that from the beginning. We used to start our day with yoga. We used to start our day with meditation. Um, but it's more than just like, you know, something that just seems like cool and hippie to do. The breathe in part of our routine or rhythm is that focus time, that focus academic work with within the main lesson block, that focus academic work um, within um, whether you call it table work or not necessarily has to take place in the table, but it's that focus time. And that amount of time is going to vary per child, per developmental stage or where your kiddos are at and what reflects to them. So you have that focused part time of the day. And then what, as you move through your schedule or routine or rhythm, then you um, put it strategically in different parts, the breathing out. Now this is where in you're focusing, you're um, getting all those different elements in, you're absorbing information, you are taking in whatever you can take in, you're learning, um, you're crafting whatever it may be doing, but then you need to release all that pent up focus energy and let it out. So now the let out portion can mean completely different uh, for each child. It can be completely different for each stage and it can be completely different for each family. And it also can be di um, different um, depending on the day of the week, right? So if it's a day that they have other outsourced courses, I may need to um, keep in mind that I need to insert those um, breathing out elements more frequently. Start our day and let's start with me, right? Because um, I wholeheartedly believe that you as the educator has to enter the day with the best mindset that you can, right? Because our energy is gonna be absorbed by them. <laughs> so, and I'm not a perfect mom, teacher or anything, far from it. But I can also realize that my energy is gonna spill out to the rest of the family. So I need to check in with myself. So what do I do first thing in the morning? So we did discuss that first thing, I, I get some work done. And the reason why that is something that um, actually is calming for me is because if I enter our school days or straight into mom mode and let's, you know, get the breakfast done and get this done and, and, and you know, go down my task list, I am conscious that I have this to-do list that is growing and growing as the day goes by because I haven't addressed it yet. I haven't um, started my day with checking off some boxes. That may not be calming for you, but it that is focused time where I get up first thing and I don't even leave the bed, to be honest with you. I don't. I mean, I'm not going to film that for you. I'm not going to show you that component. I don't leave the bed. I open my my daily planner and I look at what I um, crafted the day before of what I need to get done and what check stuff I can check off before we start with our day. Um, and I guess that done as much as possible. Why? Because now I can enter into a state of mind of, okay, I can let it out. So the next thing I do to let it out self-care. 
So remember, I got up and I went straight to there work. There was no coffee making. There was no something brewing, nothing. I just went straight to work because I needed to t close tabs. I need to close the tabs or else I am not gonna be a comp parent or a comp educator. I, I'm just not. So um, once we move out of that, then I'm gonna have some time to do some self-care. So I'm gonna do a little skincare. I'm gonna put a little bit of lipstick on. I'm gonna just like make myself feel good for a second and say, you know, you're 40, but you don't look so bad, girl. You don't look too bad. I'm going to prepare our materials for the day. And if I've had one of those weeks that I am ill-prepared, I'm gonna try to go on double speed and get everything ready as quickly as possible. Again, I am not perfect. And sometimes I start the week with my lesson plans completely empty. It happens. <laughs> Believe it or not, this type A mama happens. So when we go from, um, from that, I prepare the materials that we need. And at this point, my kiddos are naturally waking up. I say I allow them to naturally wake and naturally start their day, but I, I, I am still type A. So if it's 930 and nothing is happening yet, I'm going to gently do a first reminder for transition meaning um, they get up and they go straight order we'll start um, illustrating something um, on uh, pro she wakes up she kind of needs like um, her funnel and it's all kinds of like Arlene isn't that completely opposite of Waldorf education yeah do I care no <laughs> do you do you <laughs> whatever works for you and your family I won't judge don't judge me all right so my son he's a gamer so he will go in and um, he'll start doing a little bit gaming and stuff and first thing in the time morning. to stop and let's move on so then he'll step into the shower um, he's my early riser and one of the things that we determine that works for us is like instead of coming like um, especially now that I do a lot of work first thing in the morning, they know, okay, this is mommy's do not disturb time unless it's, you know, very important. Um, so they'll just do their own thing and I'm okay for them to do whatever that old thing Lead me is. to my funnel because my ADHD, if you interrupt me more than a couple of times, it's going to be really hard for me to refocus and to get back into my hyper-focus mode. And I need that, right? Um, so we're respecting the boundaries of each other. I know that to come into my voters room first thing in the morning and start saying okay so this 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 and this and that is going to end extremely badly and i am going to pick my I battles not join their chaos i have to be their calm and vice versa and they get to the shower and stuff um, my kiddos will go ahead on one of the practices that we've done for years and getting into fostering independence is that i no longer take care of breakfast they do um, now on certain times that I want to, like, I have so many dietary restrictions, uh, so does my son and stuff, and sometimes there's just nothing quick to eat, <laughs> and I hate gluten-free bread. There's, like, maybe one brand that I like. Um, he's cool with most of them. I hate them, like all of them. <laughs> so there's like no quick toast or whatever and all that stuff. So um, they will start um, cooking a meal. Now I like to be very close by because you know, like my son is still, <laughs> I still like he he's older than he looks, but I just I don't want him to burn himself. <laughs> Um, I still have a little bit of trouble letting go, but I do not intervene. I just um, supervise from afar. Um, so like, you know, you'll see some clips and I am on the other side of the island. Um, so I am not interfering with the kids process. don't like to eat as the minute they wake up. That's just like um, them. So they can do a couple of tasks before then. So they do that, they get the breakfast away. My son really has been taking the lead with this instead of my daughter because you know his his um, aspirations is to be a chef. Um, so um, we let him go ahead and do this. doesn't mean that we don't need to shift. Sometimes we do, depending on what the temperament is that day, or what the temperature is that day. Um, maybe we are got off on the wrong side because there's hormones, there's all kinds of stuff going on. You're, you guys know if you're dealing with tweens and teens, this is a whole different ball game. Um, so, and I'm not saying there wasn't challenges when they were younger, oh my gosh. You don't do circle time or anything like that anymore. I would say like when we were young, when they were younger, we, we had um, times where like we did the mindful practice, we did some yoga when we that started. That's something that works for us into anymore. our focus part of the day. So now we are starting back into the breathing in. So now we are 
um, focus, right? So this is our routine for this morning. Um, and this varies with my daughter just a little bit. The first task that they to, um, choose to take on is their warm up. Um, now we, we are stimulating the intellect and um, some of that time, like when my daughter was doing Oak Meadow Math, um, we would do some mental math practice um, games that was part of it. Um, and you know, a lot of different math programs we've used have had that element. So that would be something that will get like things going, but not in a point of frustration. Now um, she uses Dennis in math. That's there's no little game or anything like that, which is fine. She's not at that stage that she would even appreciate that anymore, um, even though you know, it's always great practice. Um, so she will go ahead and start her math as so will my son. So now they're both doing math. That allows me, because I outsource math, one does teaching textbook, the other one does this in, um, Dennis and Algebra. So now that um, I have that extra time, unless I'm needed to help facilitate or um, reinforce a concept and stuff, I am visually available so that they know that I am present when they need me to be. Um, so they go ahead and start their math and um, I continue to do some of my marketing work, um, graphic and then design also work. with the work that I do with Christina and I will intermittently bounce between the, um, those finished things. with the mathematics that so they will go ahead and check in with me um, and, and I will ask them if was there any concerns, what did they learn about that day? I, off, I very, very highly recommend if you're using any kind of online base or outsourced type of mathematics and stuff that you check in with your kiddos on the regular. You do not want to be six months down the road and realize that there was a concept that they never understood and they were just hey, passing check in. Okay, what well, was your lesson about? Um, did you understand it? Was there any point of concerns? Do you have any questions to me and how can I assist you today? Um, so I want to make sure that they know that even though that mommy is working, that I am still available and um, but I also want them also to respect certain boundaries, right? Because there are certain points where you are old enough to know that this can wait and this cannot. Some families, right. and especially if you have younger kiddos, would choose to put another breathe out event, maybe going outside, maybe um, something with movement, maybe um, a, a I don't need that pause um, at this stage um, as of right now. Some days, maybe I do, but there's no other additional pause um, of breathing out element. So we go straight into our main lesson block so math is a daily so not consider a, a main lesson block or a block for us so now we're going into what some people would consider a block schedule um, but this we you know it's main lesson block for us all right so we go into our main lesson block and um, there is assignments that I've um, have preset um, usually um, in a three kind of like a three-day rotation we don't really uh, we're not purists so we don't really um stick to like exact time a new lesson you let it sit with them um resonate for uh, overnight and then you like um revisit it the um the next day and then on the third day you're um, reviewing everything that you've done and then introducing a new element um you know and this is again an oversimplification oversimplification um we are not very strict on that, but it does flow similar to that. So we start the main lesson. So at the beginning of the week, or as we start the week, or we're starting, um, maybe that lesson is starting um, halfway through the week. This is where my most teacher intensive component is gonna be. I'm presenting the lesson. Yes, even to um, uh, with high school content. Yes, to um, older middle school, I am still, the one leading the um, the lessons. Um, I would never describe myself as child led, but I do listen to my kiddos input when they want to learn about something. And, you know, and I don't believe in everything having to be a lesson. Um, so some things can just be done because they're fun to do and doesn't need to be a lesson. Um, but sometimes we do choose like my son in um, his culinary year. Uh, with culinary foundations and these main lesson blocks of culinary history. Um, and that was something I just, over the years, I'm like, I don't wanna make it a lesson. It's more like our kitchen schooling part of the day, but I don't want it to feel like it's a, a task. We are going into a certain time and no one is moving and it's almost 10 o'clock. I'm gonna start making some very strong suggestions to get start going. I am Latina after all. Okay, a lot of integration of our language arts of what you know normally we would consider um, English language arts, the literature components, and then it will flow into the connection with our social studies. Like my daughter right now, she um, uh, has a close relationship with her English and her civics, um, and then again she has a, a close relationship with her um, English and her science. Now we were doing the block studies that I always talked about. So 
So um, we are one main lesson block for three weeks, switching off on, on the next one to three weeks. And that is more with the science and um, social studies that switches off, right? So that way we can really, um, with the block scheduling, you can really um, hone in into that specific subject and dedicate all your time to it without having to split your time and um, and then you will have a longer day. So a main lesson block may last just a couple hours depending on what's on hand for that day. So, um, and that's typical for a couple hours. Now at this point that we have been focused. Right, so I these are the ones that my daughter uses and she loves, these are from Lara. Yes, we are very big Lara I'm fans. I'm going to have her check which ones she likes better because I have this set that was like on sale, but they're also professional quality. So I am interested to see what yeah, she okay. So let's do Lyra on this side and then do the, the other one on the back. Sure. This has soft graphite. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, I think it's the same size as, they're both common tin. These just look nicer to me, but let's see work-wise. I just did like a little drawing with these and it felt a little, it felt nice, but a little rough. Yeah. So, so these are the same. All right, so we're testing same with same against each other. It felt rougher, didn't it? You you like that one better? Really? You try it. Really? I don't believe that. Seriously? Alright, so let's see. I can't see what I'm doing and holding the camera. This is kind of difficult. Maybe I should have my stand. Okay, that feels rough. Well, but this is a rough table too. This one felt smoother. It does. Oh wow, that's so. I was not expecting and this. That. Is made in Britain, and these are German, right? Germany. Yeah, these are Germany. It smells like wood. It smells like wood. Yeah, but see, like this is what took me off. Like, if they're rough. Hold on, focus, focus, focus. It's like a rough. It looks rough there, like the yeah, natural wood, smooth. and this, and that one's smoothed. Hold on, there we go. So, hmm, hey, there is a review for you guys. Um, yeah, this is the crazy tangents we go in the middle of our day. Like them both. This is Derwent. I don't even know how to say that. Yeah, this one's better. Dang it. Lyra, you have failed us. It's infused into every single subject and that is just how she learns best. And my son has actually, you know, gravitated more and more that side as well. So like before, it wasn't something that I was hyper-focused with him um, because he was more like leaning more traditional. Um, so, you know, there's a little blend of that, but now it's like, as he got older, it really like what she was doing was resonating more with him. Okay. So, see is my kitty. All right, so she went ahead and finished. This is where our new daily rhythm is going to go. And I'm gonna put this, I think it's gonna work. What do you think? You think it's gonna stay in the planner? Just need to tape it, not the washi tape. Not what she says. I was like, well, what can I just put like washi tape? And she's like, no. You cannot. Okay, this is really pretty. I love stay. that. Okay, well, I don't know how to, how am I gonna, I don't want to cover it. So we have to figure out how we, should we use glue instead? Yeah. So we can glue, cause see this is thick water on um, color paper. And so I'm trying to figure out the best way to put, cause normally we would have this like in different spots and stuff, but um, hmm, where's our raven? I don't have a raven stamp. But you can draw me a raven. What? Does I want one? But I really want one. Where? Right there. Like covering. I, I like want a bird. 
the rave finally their breathe out point so now they're gonna um relax and chill forever so depending on what time of day is because it depends when we got started depending on what time of day is they may be going for a snack um they may be going for lunch because it's lunch time <laughs> um yes our days are not two hours in place mm. if that works for you awesome awesome i'm happy for you but please don't come at me with why is your day so long? Walk, uh, or like, and, and if we have a lot going on, I prefer to keep those outdoor times towards the end of the day, even if they take like a little mini break and stuff like that. Again, remember we have like, you know, especially means water. She has a pretty big workload. It's like, you know, the eighth grade curricula uh, um, and stuff. And then she also has some high school courses. They're mm, not gonna lie. But then she's really being allowed to like have breathe out points throughout her main lesson as well, because um, it may be the point that she's illustrating something or that she's drawing out a map or that she's illustrating her um her science lab or whatever it may be um because that's how she starts everything she illustrates it and then she um adds the writing um my son as well like when he will start like doing some research around meals and stuff like that that is actually not a hyper focus part from him that is actually a breathing out because this is a passion of him um of him so his research is actually something different so i'm very conscious of how i place things throughout the day and how i direct their day um now i do anticipate that the more and more where we work together that i'm going to have my daughter take more and more reign on how she arranges her day now right now she has a lot of say of what happens first and last how did you make it look like a stamp with a marker but how does it look like it was a stamp but it's not a stamp that's so cool Look, it's my bird. He's there. I like my bird. This is crafted the way that she needs it to be crafted. Um, and this her and sometimes she's like, um, no, I want to do my main lesson block first and then I'll go into my math and stuff like that. Sometimes some days she just, you know, needs to flip things around and that's just totally cool because the whole point of the rhythm is that it speaks to the whole child and that it keeps the whole child in mind, right? So if you're telling me you need something different, then I'm going to listen to that. Um, so once we um, break for either uh, snack, lunch, whatever it may be, then we come into um, a continuation of our main lesson block or into our main lesson block B, however I choose to call it that day. Um, and this is gonna have more of the hands um, part, remember? Sometimes that we do things together, it just doesn't work anymore. There's, I can do a whole video on that of why family studies doesn't really work. Um, my daughter especially, and she'll give me a face right now, um, she does not like waiting for her little brother to finish what he's doing so she can keep going on with her day. She despises it with every fiber of her being so doing combined subjects just does not work because he's still um doing something or whether his math is taking longer or whatever it may be and then she's like well i'm done and i'm ready to move on and that can't move on yeah i would say since last year that we just could just not use this side of the marker why that's the dots for the stamp a lot of families even in high school they're like oh we do these family subjects and my kid was only 23 months apart um and they do it all the way through i'm not saying that you can't or that you are going to come to this point as well but i'm saying that it's perfectly normal if you do um breathing in uh with some piano practice um so that element as well is uh kind of a little bit of both breathe in to focus on the notes and things like that or then breathe out and share um, and play your own composition um, play your own song and so that is just like more freeing and calming and stuff so now we're ready to move to our afternoon block or continuation of our Mason lesson block let's see okay so it's in the planner now um, I, I have all these other sheets fill out with other things but See, this speaks to me. Doesn't this look better than what the other? Okay, this is what I had before. Very basic. I don't know what Why did you purposely was... use gray? I don't know. I have no idea. Like, I don't know. Maybe I was having a gray day or a beige day. Maybe I was being one of those sad beige people, lively arts type of um, 
transition. So it serves as a, a moment of transition. Before in the past, we used to have our music practice and during the day. Um, so that no longer is the case. Uh, it kind of just flows better at the end. Uh, we get like one of our hardest subjects pushed out. Now we can kind of tap in into our creative part of our energy and uh, move throughout the day even if the content is more difficult or complex. I have like does not care one bit about art. <laughs> But like, um, so I allow him to translate his stuff where it would say, oh, um, you know, illustrate this or whatever. Then instead of him illustrating his strength, this, you know, in language art, so he will write something, he will write a story, he will narrate it or whatever. And he will much rather prefer to do that than draw pictures. Sometimes he does. Going to work on any projects that we have on Sydney that, you know, we're building uh, a diorama. Uh, we're um, doing some science labs that uh, is connected with what we're learning about. We're doing some um, music appreciation. So the other um, likely arts, are, they go kind of on a loop. So we have um, instructional time of art, which means it's aside from how it's connected from every class. So you've seen my son's um, art curriculum. You know, my daughter takes the high school and she's also testing some else out I'm not ready to sh uh, share what that is yet because I really want to form a uh, honest opinion and um, dig in deeper as we complete more and more of the lesson and this works for me because my work is I'm um, self-employed my work is um, flexible so for someone that works for someone else or has a more rigid schedule this will look a lot different um, and like if I had a rigid schedule, I was still working as an RN. I still have an active license, but uh, we meet up with um, our homeschool group to um, do art museum trips um, that we go every single month. Then there is a group art class that we do as well with our homeschool assignments that need to be turned in. I want them to get I'm really used to having a deadline because I'm not schooling young kiddos. I'm schooling kiddos that are stepping in officially into high school that within a few years are gonna be out there under the direction of another professor. Thursday, I am um, planning for the next week. I already know where we're gonna be. I'm gonna mess up right now. I'm just gonna tell you I'm gonna mess up. Um, so our days are crafted with the whole entire child in mind from head to toe so we want to make sure that we stay true to that and not just because oh now they're in ninth grade um, we're gonna strip all these elements that we did since they were little and I just feel like um, a lot of times we're just rushing the process and um, for us there's no need for that to rush the process. So instead of taking the car to our clubhouse we're going to walk there. This bag is the one that I always rave about. Uh, my first saw it. It's enormous. It's enormous. Landon can we see it? Can you it? see compared to Landon? It's from Fit and Fresh. They comes in several patterns. I first saw it at Simple Five. She had a print made for her. Um, and the bag was like, I don't know, like 20 bucks or 20 something dollars. It was, yeah, it was like on sale. I, I'll link it down below, but it's the most awesome bag ever. And we use it for all types of things. Go to the beach, go to the pool, transferring books. When we were moving, it's the bag that keeps on getting. So I know like a lot of people like to do um, outdoor times in the middle of their day. I just have found that that does not work for us. Um, it's really hard to get them to refocus and go back in. So we may have days where I feel like, okay, a change of scenery is definitely um, necessary. However, for the most part, um, we save any outdoor adventure stuff for the afternoon um, where our core stuff and main lesson block has been completed. Um, it's just what works for us. And I know people um, do things way good walk over here. Um, our community is pretty large, so it actually makes more sense to drive to the clubhouse. Um, however, by making us all walk, it's beneficial, and then we can try to get it a little bit more brisk um, walk in there too, so just get our hearts pumping. Um, so I mean, it's only like I don't know, like a 10-minute walk. Like I said, this community is pretty big, um, so that's what we do now. Um, we since we're coming at the end of the day. Um, and we do have a fitness center and stuff like that. And I think we want to start something like next year's stuff, especially with my daughter going officially into ninth grade. 
um, into, and I remember as a varsity swimmer, I was um, doing weight training and all that stuff in high school. Um, so I'm going to be playing with the idea of that as well because, um, you know, to just take advantage of, of the, our fitness room. However, um, I can't yet and I really miss that. But um, hopefully um, these next few procedures on my back will be successful and I can get back to a state of wellness Things that have been done has been helping um, at small scales, but it has been helping because um, if you look back at me last September, you know, this past September, I could not even bear weight on my right leg. I could not bear weight at all. It was so painful. So the nerve damage and nerve pain that I have, it actually really helps to walk and get that circulation and everything going. Um, it doesn't help my back and my um, leg pain at all, but it does help with the nerve pain. And to me, that's that's what kills me. The nerve pain is so, so, so bad. And really hard to walk and stuff like that afterwards. Um, and that's usually why, like, um, there's just no point of you showing you any little glimpse, glimpse of, like, our afternoon day. Because by then, I'm just, I'm done. I'm done. I mean, I've been at my max point. Everything hurts. I am I'm done. To be trying to go into the hot tub. I have to be careful with the hot tub. Because that pot's um, posterior dysatic tachycardia syndrome. Have you never heard of it? Um, yeah, I'm a hot mess with all kinds of stuff. Um, so anyways, yeah, so extreme temperature changes and stuff can trigger it and I don't want to pass out, so. Oh. It's so hot. I'm like literally cooking. environment that you fostered um and i'm not saying it's perfect because a lot of times we oh have challenges learning disabilities you know we have um differently wired we right? breathe out we cook as a family um we, you know we discuss and we, we sit down as a family to eat and to me that is something so um often taken for granted um and i don't want to take that for granted i hope that now you kind of can see how and why we do what we do and the whole meaning behind it um, when it all said and done it's not a catchphrase daily rhythm or you know blood studies or it's not a catchphrase because it sounds good we want that child to grow not only in math skills or their grammar or this not as a nurse, one of the first things that I learned in nursing school is that your patient is not your uh, room number. Your patient is not the body part that is ill. Your patient is not the surgery that they have. Your patient is not that post, you know, post um, hysterectomy or laparoscopic hysterectomy. Your um, patient is not your ovarian cancer person. Your He's patient, a person. your patient is the whole person. So that whole, that that whole holistic view to medicine spills over into how I parent, how I educate, um, that my children are more than the pieces that they're made of and they are a whole child. And I need to be conscious of that, that I am fostering every element of that whole child and I am directing them as best as I can. And I'm not always gonna be perfect. I am not gonna be anywhere near perfect and I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm gonna stumble, I'm gonna make really bad mistakes. And I maybe make my children feel bad at times too because of the words I choose or the facial expressions I make or the frustrations that I let Opportunity out. to grow in who they are and who they want to be, even if they don't know who that is yet. Thank you for stopping by on our lesson lab and I hope you stick around. I'll see you guys next time.